Hey, what's up guys? Smiles Deep here. I just want to add before the video starts, this is a pretty long video, so if there's a specific part you're interested in, I'm leaving jump marks in the description and in the comments. Also, I didn't do any editing to this footage. This is raw, what came out of the camera. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Today we're back with another Mavic Mini video. This time we're going to be testing out some ND filters from Freewell. The company was nice enough to send them out to me. We've got a selection of eight here. These will actually be handy now because in the new firmware update for the Mavic, uh, we can now actually change manual video settings. So white balance and also shutter speed. In the package it comes with this little instruction booklet, a filter guide to help you figure out which filter you need to use. Standard day filters here. For bright days, which I'd say it's pretty bright today. Long exposure stuff. And one for nighttime flying too. But I think I'm gonna go with uh, one of these neutral density uh, polarizing lenses and I'll probably go with the 16 which is four f-stops so I'll do a flight with this filter on maybe try one of the other filters or the non-polarizing lenses and then just do one flying in full auto and see how they look in comparison I'd say it's about early morning right now which is what this recommends the ND 16 polarizing this one here and I practiced putting one on before they seem to apply really easily definitely a good idea to have your drone off while you're flying it so you're not fighting against the gimbal. It just slides over and, and clips in in the back here. All right, looks like it's on. So I'm gonna be shooting in 30 frames per second, 2.7K. They also add an option to shoot in 24 frames per second now too, which they didn't have before. But I'm gonna stick to 30. I'm switching to manual. So I already have my settings preset, ISO at 100. Shutter speed is double my frame rate, which is 30 frames per second. Uh, looks like we're a little bit underexposed right now, but maybe it will look better once we're up in the air. So let's go ahead and do that. This grass is pretty short, so it shouldn't be a problem taking off. Go ahead and do that and start recording. Let's take off. Make sure everything looks good, which it does. Let's get a little bit of altitude. fly out. So right now, it's definitely going to be easier to tell in post than it is right here. But it does look like the polarizing lens taking a lot of glare off of the, the water. That's why I chose this spot to fly actually, because I remember when I flew here before there was a lot of glare on the water. Also, this is a restricted airspace. You can only fly to 200 feet because there's an airport in the vicinity. But let me also change the white balance because that might make a difference. And I'm going to set it I'm not an expert on white balance, but... Oh, hello, how are you doing? Hi. Is that a drone up there you're running? Yes, it is. How, how high are you allowed to go with that? Um, in this area, we're not allowed to go too high, 200 feet, because we're close to SRQ. How high is that? That's like 150 feet right now. That drone's only 150 feet? Yes, sir, that's right. Small. Yeah, it's pretty small. It's it's 150 feet in altitude right now, and it's 293 feet in distance is it, away. Is it transmit a, um, a picture down? Yeah. See, I have a, a live video feed right here, so I can see what's happening. Oh, yeah. It's a bit hard to see because it's bright. Quite amazing. How but much? Yeah. Did, you mind if I ask how much? Oh no. Uh, this one was 400. This is a Mavic Mini, so it's actually a relatively well-priced drone. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. For what we can see. Where do you buy them? Uh, I got this one in Miami, actually. There's a DJI store, that's the name of the brand. Mm -hmm. But you can buy them offline. Really? Yeah, so uh, I'm actually recording a video right now uh, testing out new filters for the drone. Oh, filters? Yeah, they have uh, ND filters now. You which for uh, the engine? Uh, for the, uh, the camera lens on the, oh. On the drone. Oh, 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 I got it. Yeah, so... Well, thanks for explaining it to me. Yeah, no problem. You have a good one. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know if that helped changing the white balance. I'm not a white balance expert. If we lower it down to around like 5,500, 
This is the result we get. And it definitely really does take that glare off the water. We have 15 satellites and really good signal right now, so I'm not really worried about my connectivity. And then I'm going to raise it up as well to maybe 6,000. Might be a little bit high. I'm definitely not a white balance expert, as I said. But you can get an idea of what it looks like. And I'll try and fly up to relatively the same spot and uh, put on auto and we can compare, see if it looks any different. At the end of the video, I'll uh, put up both the videos next to each other as well for good comparison. That looks quite nice, I think, and well exposed. Dropping that white balance down a little bit. I wonder what it would look like if we dropped it down even further. It makes it really quite quite blue. Probably that's too far. I'd say up in the more... Uh, around there-ish, maybe? Maybe that's even a little bit too blue. But I do think it looks nice. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. We'll keep it at around 57, I think, maybe looks the best. But yeah, that's a good test there. So I say we bring this one back. And then we try it again in auto. And maybe we'll even test one of the other lenses out just to see, get an idea. Now we'll fly it just in auto without a filter on. And that will be our base comparison. So as you can see, everything looks really blown out with those settings without the uh, ND filter on it. But we'll go into auto and see how that looks. Get oriented here, everything looks good. Get some altitude and head on out again to about the same spot, if we can. We'll get up to 150 feet again. That's how high we were before. There we go. And actually, today doesn't seem like it's too bad of a day for glare. I don't see a ton of glare on the water. Maybe it's because uh, it's more early in the morning than when I flew before. You know what, let's use Cinesmooth mode. Cinesmooth mode. Then we can get a really slow pan. So we can get somewhat of a comparison video and I'll uh, put the videos together at the end like I said before. Hopefully that will give a good perspective of what it looks like flying purely on auto versus with manual settings and an ND filter. And again, I don't claim to be an expert for video settings, so I'm sure other people can do a lot better job than me. But it's nice to have that option to be able to use a polarizing lens and ND filters. I think we went out a little bit further last time, so I'll do that. Maybe we can get a view of these boats. It's a really beautiful day today. Really, really nice. 
Yeah, today you can't see too much of a tent on the water. It's not quite as clear as when I flew before, unfortunately, because we've had some rain out here. But yeah, honestly, the automatic does such a good job. Um, and right now, maybe the lighting conditions aren't as harsh as they've been in the past. But I say maybe let's bring it back and try another filter. We'll just do the regular filter without the polarizing lens and see if that's going to make much of a difference. I come out of Cine Smooth mode. Spin around. And come back. Leave it for a second this time to write those files. And then we'll try one more filter from Freewell. So yeah, we have the, uh, the neutral density eight filter on there this time. This is the non-polarized, so we'll see. Maybe this will be uh, not dark enough for the manual settings. Right, there's only one way to find out. We're recording, go ahead and take off. Oh wow, that actually looks really good. Although it may be a little bit overexposed. So maybe the other uh, filter was better. I can see down in the bottom right hand corner there. It's kind of got your exposure rating. Whoa, come down a little bit to 150 feet. So we're at about the same position. We'll go in Cine Smooth mode. And let's see if we can adjust that white balance. Maybe bring it down. That's going to make it colder. So if we bring it up, we'll make it a warmer image, I believe. That's definitely too high. And again, I'm not the best judge. But we'll do a quick turn. I think that looks pretty nice. Maybe it's slightly overexposed. The whites on the buildings are pretty white, just for today. It's fairly bright, it's morning time. I think that's a nice looking image though. It's still amazing how weak that a relatively small photo can create, especially if you're in a kayak. Yeah, it's know. definitely a little bit overexposed. But you never know, maybe people will like that look for a uh, some kind of cinematic purpose. But for this situation, I think that the uh, 16 was better. I can try and drop that uh, back down to what I had it at when I was flying the other filter, 57. And put this overexposure warning on actually tells you what's overexposed, so all the sky is overexposed. And some parts of the boats. And the other one didn't look like things were overexposed. It's interesting. All right, so for today, yeah, the, it looks like the ND-16 was perfect, the polarizing. You know, I guess I could fly it one more time with the 16, seems, that seemed to be perfect. And uh, we'll do the non-polarized version. Ooh, that was a fast turn. Finish writing those files, and then we'll try the 16 non-polarized. I think that'll really give us the perfect exposure. 
and take off. This is the non-polarizing lens. Go to 150. And again, I've taken all my uh, precautions with air map and all that. So this is, yes, slightly underexposed. But honestly, it looks pretty good. Fly out a little bit. See if we mess with that white balance. So we bring it up. I'd say that looks too much, maybe. Bring it down. That's maybe actually I don't know. That looks kind of good. It might be a little bit cold. I'd say around 57 looks good. And let's check that overexposure warning. See if we get anything. Not much. The sky's not overexposed. If anything, we're slightly underexposed. Do that slow pan. And this is the number 16 ND filter. You can see some white parts of the buildings are overexposed a little bit, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. Sorry, I'm going really fast. Oops. It's like our app crashed there. Reconnect to the aircraft. There we go, and we're back. Always remember if you disconnect, just stay calm. You should get signal back. Plus I wasn't very far away. So quite a lot of overexposed things over here, but that might be just because uh, it's very white and very reflective, so overall, all the sky pretty much is uh, exposed correctly, so that's impressive. Nice. We'll turn that exposure off. Where was it? It was under advanced camera, right? There it is. Turn that off. We're about to get down to 20% battery, so we'll bring it home. All right. Perfect. So finally here, I'm gonna try and sync all the footage together so you get an idea of what they look like in comparison side by side. So here we have all the videos somewhat synced together. The top left is the ND16 filter. The top right is the ND8 filter. The bottom left is on auto and the bottom right is the ND16 polarizing lens. Now remember we did change the white balance settings a little bit on some of these videos, but you should be able to get a pretty good idea of the exposure and picture quality in this comparison. It looks like the ND16 is the best exposed image. And for the situation, it really depends whether or not you want the polarized lens, uh, but it does appear to definitely cut back on the glare on the water. Anyway, feel free to add in the comments which filter you would use and whether or not you think it's worth picking up these filters or just sticking with auto. Also remember, I didn't do any kind of color grading in post. So what you see is straight out of the camera, just with the lens filter. I'd say that was pretty successful. I'll let that finish writing. Yeah, this is not a sponsored video. Um, but Freewell did send me these filters for free. So that was really nice of them, and I appreciate that. So go check them out. I'll leave a link to uh, their product if you want to get one yourself. But yeah, thanks Freewell. Really cool filters, and I'm excited to play with these more. Maybe we'll do some uh, photography stuff with them too. But anyway, remember to like if you want to, and subscribe if you feel like it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video.